Hey guys, it's Laura with Hartford Stitch. Thanks so much for joining me. This month we're gonna be talking all about sewing rooms. So over the holiday break, I had a chance to do a little beautification on my own sewing room. And I've definitely had sewing room organization and design on my mind ever since. So today I wanna to talk to you all about how to set up your own sewing space and it doesn't have to be a sewing room. Next week we're gonna talk about how to organize all your small tools. The following week, how to organize your projects. And on the fourth week, I'm gonna give you a little tour of my sewing space, which hopefully will be completely done by then. So let's today start talking about what you need to set up a sewing space and how to make that sewing space really comfortable for you. So there are a few main essentials. One, of course, is a table to put your sewing machine on. The other is a chair to sit in. The third is a workspace. So whether it's a big table or a space on the floor, some place where you can kind of lay out your fabric, lay out your patterns, cut, pin, and really have some room to work. Fourth, and this one people often forget about, is a place for your ironing board or your ironing mat. And I have an entire video dedicated to what kind of irons and what kind of ironing surfaces I recommend. So if you're unsure, you should go check that out. But you do want to make sure you have a place that you can put that. And then of course we need access to an electrical outlet because all of this stuff requires power. So you'll notice I said sewing space. A sewing room of course is ideal. I'm actually at home in my sewing room right now which is about half of our attic. Um, this is by far the biggest sewing space and nicest sewing space that I have ever had. I have worked out of the corner of our dining room. I've worked out of various bedrooms. I have worked out of the middle of my kids' playroom. Prior to this house, I had closets. I would store everything underneath beds. Basically, if I could carve out a little space for my sewing setup, I would. So we all know that in an ideal world, we can leave everything out all the time. It's something I hear all the time from my students. They'll come in for a class, and then the next time I see them, I'll say, oh, have you done any sewing at home? And they say, well, I just really haven't taken the machine out of the box yet. Without a place to keep everything set up, you are less likely to sew. And obviously that's not what we want. So if you can find a place where everything can set up, that's great. If you can't try to find a place that near your setup spot, you can keep everything nice and organized, whether it's a cupboard or I once saw somebody take a big sheet of plywood and put wheels on it, casters, and put the machine and the iron and everything else on top of it and slide it under their bed. So all they had to do was slide it back out when they were ready to sew. Thought that was kind of genius. All right, so once you kind of figure out where you can have it, then we have to make sure that it's set up for you to be really comfortable. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but I have students come in all the time, say that their shoulders hurt because they're crunched up right here, or their back hurts because they're bent over their project, or if it's kids, they just don't feel like they have the right setup because kids need smaller chairs or smaller tables. So I'm gonna show you a couple tips and tricks today to make your sewing setup as comfortable as possible so you can sew for as long as possible. So let's talk about the table and your sewing machine. In an ideal world, your sewing machine would be the height of the table. If you've seen some vintage sewing machines, that happens in modern ones too, but you see it more frequently in vintage ones like this one, you'll see that the machine is actually set into the table so that the bed of the machine, this part right here, is even with this. So if you bend your arms at the elbow and touch the table, that's where the bed of your sewing machine will be. When it's up high like this, we automatically put up our shoulders or crouching a little bit more and it can make it uncomfortable. Now, I don't worry about it when I'm just kind of doing some regular sewing, but if I'm doing bigger project, look, let's say I'm quilting or I'm gonna spend a lot of hours there, I actually like to lift myself up so that my arms are more even. So my solution for that is my daughter's booster seat. I know that seems really funny, but if I put this underneath and sit on there, my arms are now, when I bend at the elbow, are now even, they're parallel to the floor, and they're even with the bed of the machine. All right, so if you take a look at my feet here, see how they are completely flat on the ground? So I can put my heel on the ground and press the pedal with my toes. That's what you wanna be able to do. You don't wanna have your foot dangling up here and press it with your heel up in the air because it doesn't give you as much control. But if raising your seat up makes it so that your foot is not able to go flat on the ground, or if you have shorter, shorter legs, or if you're a smaller child that's sewing, then you wanna make sure you raise up your pedal. And we do this all the time in the studio, especially with younger kids. And it makes a huge difference. 
So to raise up your foot, you wanna find some sort of box or block, something sturdy that you can't crush by putting your foot on it, and also something that's not gonna slip around too much. So this case right here, we're actually gonna talk about a lot next week because it's one of my tips for storing tools. Now normally, I'd have something else over on my left foot so it's not just my right foot that's kept up. But this way, if you had shorter legs, you could put your heel on here and use your toe. So once you have your foot at the right position, your seat at the right position so that when your arms are bent, it's parallel to the ground and you're right at the bed of the machine, then your shoulders should be able to drop and you should be able to sew really comfortably. So again, I only really worry about this if I'm doing bigger projects like quilts or I know I plan on sitting at the sewing machine for a while. So those little tricks, even though they can take a little bit of time to set up, are worth it to make sure that you're super comfortable while sitting there. Okay, and for this last one, I actually had to move my machine over here just so that you could kind of see how I'm setting this up. We are so used to, whether it's computers or books or whatever we're working on, when we put something in front of us, we usually center it so that we are directly in front of whatever it is we're working on. But a sewing machine really skews to the left. So if you do it like this, you're going to be shifting yourself over to the left in order to sew. So for the most comfort, you want to set up your sewing machine so that this part right here, where the needle is and the presser foot, is in front of you and the rest is slightly off to the right. It can feel a little bit funny because we're just so used to orienting everything directly in front of us, but it's much more comfortable and it's going to help you sew a straighter line because you can see exactly where the fabric is going and you're not looking at it from an angle. So there you have it. So it's just those essential things and it really is probably stuff you have in your house, right? The table, the chair, some sort of workspace, and I know that part can be tricky, and an ironing board. And then use boxes or booster seats or pillows or whatever you need to get yourself into the right position so that it's really comfortable to sew. So like I said, this is just the first part of our sewing room series. We'll be back next week and the week after, and then the fourth week, we'll do my little sewing room tour. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos. And if you have a unique sewing space, make sure to leave a comment below because I would love to hear all about it. Thanks so much for joining me and happy stitching.